morning. Welcome to the First Presbyterian Church's virtual worship service. We are now entering worship. This is the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. And now our call to worship. All give thanks to the Lord. The Lord hears the cries of the people. Give thanks to the Lord. The works of the Lord are great. Remember what God has done. Give thanks to the Lord. God has done miracles, and the Lord always remembers God's covenant. Give thanks to the Lord. Glory and praise is due to the Lord. And now for our opening song, Lift Him Up. How to reach the masses, men of every birth, for an answer, Jesus gave the key. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up, lift him up, till he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Oh, the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust Him and do not doubt the words that He said. I'll draw all men unto me. Yeah. Lift him up, lift him up, till he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Don't exalt the preacher, don't exalt the pew. Preach the gospel, simple, full, and free. Prove him, and you will find that promise is true. I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up. Lift the Savior up. Lift him up. Lift the Savior up. Till he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up by living as a Christian on. Let the world in you the Savior see. Then men will gladly follow him who was taught, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up, lift him up, till he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up, from the earth I draw all men unto me. Amen, amen. And now we'll have a call to confession by our deacon, Norman Fields. Good morning. <clears throat> our call to confession. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Now we'll have a prayer of confession in unison. Gracious, Gracious God, God, we have sought after things, but we have not sought after you. We have, we have expected, expected generosity, generosity, but we, we have not shown, shown generosity. We have, we have been, not been gracious or grateful. We, we have, have failed to remember all that you have done. done. Forgive us, us and fill our hearts, hearts with gratitude. gratitude. Help, Help us, us to share our gifts and strengthen and our legs so that we, we can run after you. you. Oh, oh God, in Jesus', Jesus name, name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Now we'll have a moment of silence following the assurance of pardon and the passing of the peace by Minister Norman Martin. of pardon. People of God, our sins are forgiven. We are reconciled to God. Let us therefore love one another with gratitude in our hearts and praise on our lips. And now for the passing of peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To this peace we were called as members of a single body. May the peace of Christ be with each of you. And also with you. And now, the prayers of the people and Lord's Prayer by Reverend Dr. Nancy Fields. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day that is filled with much going on. The pandemic, the um, storms, the California fires, the children are still held in uh, hostage, we know around this country. There's a lot going on, not only in this country, but around the world, not only around the world, but also in our homes, in every place and space. We know that there is a place though that we can come, where we can lay our concerns at the altar. And that's what we're going to do right now. Let us now come before the throne of grace. Lord God, we come before thy throne of grace. We are grateful. We're grateful for the opportunity that we have this day to stop what we are doing, to stop our busyness, to stop our worrying, to stop all the things that would hold us back from worshiping you, knowing, oh God, that you are God all by yourself. And so right now, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Yes. The blessings, oh God, of peace. The blessing, oh God, of knowing that you can do all things but fail. The blessing, oh God, to know that we have a place that we can come to worship, to glorify you, even in this pandemic. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah yes, Lord. to your name. Maybe the doors might be closed because of the sacred space and, and, and trying to protect all of our com community, yes, our Lord. leaders, yes, and Lord. all that put their hands to the plow. But God, yes, Lord. these leaders of the First Presbyterian Church of Mount Vernon have found it not robbery yes, Lord. to also be able to uh, allow us to worship you yes. in spirit and we thank you thank for you, these Lord. virtual worship services thank we you, thank you oh god that they allow us yes, Lord. to lay all of our cares and our supplications upon the throne of grace yes, so lord, lord, lord we thank you for hearing our cries thank you, we thank you god for this moment yes, in our lives we thank you god for just being you. Yes, Lord. And as, oh God, we continue to move around, some of us are essential, having to go into offices, classrooms, hospitals, yes, nursing Lord. homes, uh, 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 businesses. Oh God, we, we, we're having to ride buses and trains and, and, and Uber and all of those things. But we, Lord, right now, just ask that you would continue to bless our lives, bless, us, bless our families, bless, us, bless our children, yes, bless, oh God, our educators, yes, bless, oh God, our doctors, 
doctors, our yes, nurses. Lord. Bless, oh God, this branch of Zion. Yes, Continue, oh God, to allow us to remember those, oh Lord, that are unable to get yes, out. Lord. Lord, continue, oh Lord, to allow us to remember those that are are alienated from yes, family and friends. Yes, Lord. We ask, oh God, that you would allow us, oh God, to reach out and touch all of those yes, who we can, even if it's by phone, even yes, if it's Lord. by mail. Yes. However, oh God, allow us to reach out and touch. Yes, Lord. We ask, oh God, also that you would bless the non-essentials. Yes, Lord. Those, Lord, uh, men, women, boys, and girls that are. Uh, legislated to be at home yes. for whatever reason. No reason we ask God that you bless them. Bless the parents that now have to work with their children online or those that have to send their children out to the schools. We yes. ask your special blessing upon them. This is probably the most difficult time having to decide the which and the where. But we ask God that you would be with them. Yes, Lord. Bless, Lord, our seniors, oh God, wherever they may be. We ask, God, that you would touch them with a special uh, a touch of your peace yes. and your love and your grace and yes, your mercy. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Continue, oh Lord, to, to be in ever presence in their lives. Then, Lord, bless uh, all of those babies that are yes. being held hostage, wherever they may be, oh God, we ask, Lord, that you would uh, comfort them. Comfort them, Lord. We ask, oh God, that you would just continue to uh, uh, be in a presence, not only with them, but those yes, that God have the awesome responsibility for their care. Yes, Lord. And then bless all of those that are in nursing homes, those that are in hospitals, those that are suffering from grief and from loss. Yes, we Lord. ask God that you would continue to remember them. Bless this wonderful branch of Zion. Continue, O oh God, to touch all that their hands have to do, that, O oh Lord, they may be able to do all things and all do all things, things well. Yes, Lord. And so, Lord, now in the words that Jesus taught his disciples, let us say together, Our Father, Our Father. who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Let us say together, amen, amen. And amen. And now we come to a part of the service where all of us can participate in it. This is our offering time. And we would invite you that at the end of this service, that you would go to the First Presbyterian Church's uh, uh, web page. Actually, you're probably on it already. But when you finish viewing this uh, wonderful service, we ask that you would press that donate button. And when you press that donate button, give the best that you can. And we would certainly be very grateful that whatever you give would be for the continual uplifting of this branch of Zion. That the work that this church has been called to do might be able to go forth with much power and much effect. And then those that would like to give but cannot we just ask that you would do the best you can to continue to lift up this church. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we ask your blessing upon all the gifts that will be given. Bless the gift and the giver. And then, Lord, that those that wanted to give but could not, we ask, oh God, that you would bless them also. We ask, oh God, that the gifts that will be given may be used for the up kingdom, uplifting of your kingdom here on earth. We lift this prayer in Jesus' name. Let us say together, amen. 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 And amen. And now, the prayer of illumination. Let the wisdom of your word rain down on us like manna and feed us that we may be strengthened to do the work to which we are called. For the glory and honor of your name, let us say together, Amen. Amen. 
And now, uh, scripture lessons. The first lesson will be taken from Je the book of Genesis. Genesis uh, chapter 50, verses 17 through 20. And the word of God will be read out of the new international version of the Bible. And the word of God reads, This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And our second lesson is found in the Gospel of Matthew, the chap chapter 21, verses 40 through 42. Again, the second lesson, Matthew the 21st chapter, 40 through the 42nd verses. And the word of God reads, Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Now our gospel lesson will be brought to us by Minister Norman Martin. Gospel lesson is taken from New Testament, Luke chapter 5, 17 through 26. And it reads, One day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, Get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Amen, amen. This is the good news. This is the good news. This is the good news. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Uh, my subject this morning um, and the title of this message is The Power of Performing Through the Orbit of Pressure. The Power of Performing Through the Orbit of Pressure. Um, and the message this morning is the key verse is taken from Luke 5 uh, and 20. And it reads from the King James Version, When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And so I was, this message 
uh, was brought to me. God showed me this 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 particular message, and for such a time as this, and we think about this title, the power of performing through the orbit of pressure. You have to break these words down so it brings meaning to the text. Power, the Greek word as dunamis, is to to be able to be able. Um, now things with power are much more than able. That's right, they're much more than able. Uh, they're able to exert a lot of force. Um, things with power have a possession of control. Things with power um, have authority. Things of people with power, objects, people, have an influence over others. And so now we take that word and we now bring it to performing. It's thinking about the, the word performing. It's carrying things out. Um, having a certain particular function. And through makes, you know, we think about through, we think about the saying that says, if God can bring you to it, he will also bring you what? He'll bring you through it. So it, it's a there's a process. There's a process here. So then we think about the word orbit. An orbit is a regular repeating path that one object in space takes around another one. So an, an object in an orbit would be a satellite. And there are many different uh, satellites. For instance, the Earth, the Moon, these are all objects in order, in, in orbit, these are satellites. Planets, for instance, have moons that orbit them. Planets have moons that orbit them. Planets, comets, and asteroids, and other objects in the solar system, they orbit the sun. Right? They they, they go around a regular repeating path. Um, and so now we think about the the word, the the, the purpose. Purpose. And the, the, the purpose is that, for this, is that the, is usually the reason for which something is done or created or which, for which something exists. Uh, but now the purpose for this text brings us to another key word within this title is pressure. Um, now, everything in this particular setting that I'm in, setting that you're in, you, I, under pressure. Um, beams behind walls or hold that, 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 that are in a particular structure, holding a structure up, are under pressure. Um, Ensuring that the, the roof doesn't cave in. If you're sitting in a seat right now, that seat is under the pressure of your body weight. Um, if you think about a cracked foundation, it has the inability to handle pressure. Everything as well as every person is under pressure. The pressure to perform a job. Being a father when you didn't have one. Balancing money when you grew up on food stamps. Holding your tongue when someone gets on your nerves. Pressure. And so, in one of the scriptures that was read, um, particularly Matthew 21 and 42, it says, Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So we're thinking about what in this text the pressure is that and what was the purpose is that Jesus concluded that the pressures of men, the rejections of men were experienced were the doings of the Lord. Right? As Joseph so aptly puts it, yea thought that evil was against me, right? Pressures were against me, circumstances that I was under was against me, but God meant it for good. That was Genesis. 50-20. So, so we look at this, we say the Lord orchestrate what the enemy does and makes it accomplish his purpose in your life. There goes that word purpose again. The reason for why which something is done. And this is the Lord's doing, it, it reads that Jesus says. And how many times have evil things happened in your life that later you realize were necessary? If you hadn't faced, if I hadn't faced certain trials like this, like that, I know that I wouldn't have been ready for the blessings that I now can enjoy. 
In the hands of God, even our most painful circumstances become the most marvelous in our eyes. But it's how we've been able, it's, it's, the, it's that power that we had to um, apply while performing within the pressure. And sometimes it's, it's not just one. It could be many things that, that surround us, that orbit us. Right when we when we, we we see how perfectly God has constructed His plan, we can look back and sometimes we can laugh in the face of failure. However, pressure, rejection, uh, is only marvelous in the eyes of someone whose heart has wholly trusted in the Lord. Have, I want to ask you this question this morning: Have you wholly trusted in the Lord, or are you grieving over something that someone has done? as though you have no God to direct it and no grace to correct it? This is a very important question this morning because it, it challenges the perspectives that you and I have chosen to take our life. The statement, it is marvelous in our eyes, simply means that from our perspective, the worst things look good. That is what you need to do. That is what you and I need to do. Faith is not needed just to remove problems. It is also needed to, to, to endure that which orbits us, the pressure, the problems, to, to be able to, the, the power to perform. It's that, it's that faith that, to be, that, 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 that's needed to endure problems that sometimes seem immovable. But rest assured that even if God didn't move it, He is able. Amen? And if you're able, God chose to stand passively by and sometimes He's watched Someone come whose actions left you in pain. And you, at, this, at that particular moment, you have to still trust in his sovereign grace and immutable character. He works for your good. And there's a saying, if life hands you lemons, just make lemonade. But the truth is, if you walk with God, he will do the squeezing and the mixing that turns lemons into lemonade. In this particular, again, this particular... Scripture, this message this morning, as we looked at what Jesus said in Matthew, and he mentions the power of God and also how to perform in certain circumstances. We bring, I bring you this morning to Luke, and here there are many passages recorded in the scripture where Jesus told persons that their faith had made them well. And that is the faith of individuals who are in need of healing. Right? Amen? So to the woman with the issue of blood, Jesus said, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. To the blind Bartimaeus, Jesus said, Go your way. Matthew 9, 22. Your faith has made you well. But to the one leper out of ten, Jesus said, Arise! And go your way. Your faith has made you well. Right? So they've given them power to be able to perform under the orbit of pressure around them. So to arise. But in this particular situation, this paralytic man, whose name was Patrick, he was in a pandemic, not only in his physical, but also spiritually. And he had to navigate how to perform under the orbits of his own uh, pressures that was within. He received his healing not because of his faith, as I mentioned that before I mentioned faith, but this time it wasn't because of his faith, but it was because of those who orbited around him, right? those that were around, that surrounded him. It was because of the faith of his friends. Listen to what the text says. When he saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. And if you'll be honest today, you'll have to admit that, you are in, that you're in the church right now, not because of your faith and prayers alone, but because of the faith and the prayers of someone else. So let's look at this story. And it's not necessarily because of your faith, because of, it's the faith of those around you, those that are orbiting around you, those that uh, surround you, those who lift you up, those that pray for you, those who pour into you. And so 
It was a man that was brought to Jesus by the faith of his friends. And Luke says that the power of God was, was present to heal them. And in this story, there is Patrick, the paralytic, and there is four friends. Now, although Patrick wanted to attend the meeting, he was paralyzed. And his paralysis prevented him from getting to Jesus. He was what? He was paralyzed. He was unable to make use of his arms or legs. He was paralyzed. He could not stand, sit, walk, run, or jump. What was he? He was paralyzed. He could not bend, stoop, or squat. He had no, he had no physical, he was, had no physical power. He was paralyzed. He could not lean, lunge, limp, right? So he had lost the, the as I said before, power, the, the ability to exert force, the possession of control. He lost control. He couldn't lean, lunge, or limp. All he could do was lay day in and day out. There he lay looking up at the ceiling, counting the cracks, the crevices, the crevices, the cobwebs. There he lay imagining what it would be like to have strength in his limbs and healing in his body. He imagined, well, he imagined again what it would be like to look persons in their eyes rather than stare at their feet. He was paralyzed. He imagined what it would be like to walk down the street with his family, to play with his son, to run after his daughter, to sit at the dinner table for a Sunday afternoon meal. So today there are people on around us, especially in this pandemic, who are like this man. People who are in a state of paralysis, who lost their power, who, who may, maybe not in their arms, maybe not in their legs, or maybe not in their body, but they still, but still they are paralyzed. They are paralyzed by some social situations, circumstances or incidents in their, in their lives, some unresolved conflict, some unconfessed sin, some unpaid debt, paralyzed by their fear, paralyzed by their past, paralyzed by their looks, paralyzed by their race or color, paralyzed by their sex or sexuality, paralyzed by low self-esteem or, 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 or no self-esteem. They have the activity of their limbs, but still they're paralyzed. It is not that they are necessarily lazy or crazy. It's not that they don't do not want to work or they do not want to make a contribution. It is that the circumstances have, have, have overwhelmed them and, and have kept them out of the game of life, conspired them out of the game of life. And they need a lift. They're in the same condition as this man. And unless they get a lift, they're going to remain powerless. Paralyzed, unable to perform through the orbit of pressure. And before we judge them, we should remember when we went through whatever we went through and that somebody had to lift us up because we could not lift ourselves. Now, as never before, we are challenged in so many ways to move persons beyond, beyond, beyond their state of paralysis so they can get to Jesus. And that is what serving God, living for Jesus, and loving people is all about. That is a social activism for this millennium and every millennium to come. We must make it our business, our number one priority to help somebody get to Jesus. Help somebody. Help somebody. There are many people who are not going to receive the message of salvation unless you lift the corner of their mat and bring them to the place where they can hear from God, become, become, mission, become missionary in, 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 in your walk, become missionary in your faith, become missionary in in, in, in your prayers, become missionary in your ministries. Right? So, women not only need to be loose, they need to be empowered. Men need not need to be affirmed and appreciated. Children need to be mentored. People need more than chicken soup for the soul. They need the meat of the word. In other words, they need a lift. Paralyzed. Not able to perform with power through the orbit of pressure. It is not that there are no miracles available. It is not that there are no opportunities available. It is that folks need a lift. Further, I came to tell you today that this nation, although in a new millennium, is in a state of paralysis. And a state of paralysis in this nation is somewhat of a paradox. We are technologically powerful, morally paralyzed, Economically potent, ethically paralyzed, 
politically perceptive, but spiritually paralyzed. Mm, I'm convinced that people of power and privilege just don't get it. But we're going to get back to this man, back to the sermon, back to this word. Here is this man caught in the, in the throes of his dilemma when in step these men, and I love these brothers. I love them. I call them, they call them in Michigan the Fab Five, but I call them the Fab Four. And on this day and on this occasion, they became what you call a, a, a fraternity of faith and lifted this brother. These brothers took the vision of the of the million. They took the, the vision of the Million Man March very seriously. They marched and then they moved. They saw brokenness in their community. They saw lameness in their community. They saw paralysis, paralysis, paralysis in their community. They saw impotence in their community, and they picked it up, put it on their shoulders, and went to the one that could do something about it. Oh, hallelujah! In here, hey, they took this man. And they did something about it. They didn't just watch and not do anything. They moved. They didn't just march. They moved. And like these brothers, they said, this is our community. This is our friend. He is one of us. Right? His problem is our problem. This is our brother. Amen? And so here we have it. That they took on a situation and, and they said, we'll handle it. Not just you handle it, we'll handle it. Not just you deal with it, we will deal with it. Not just you will take care of it, we will take care of it. They voluntarily took this brother up in their arms and made their way to Jesus. How hallelujah. Look at them now. Lifting this paralytic man. Taking his weight up and putting it on them. Right? They were, they were they Not only was this man had pressure orbiting around him. But he had friends that orbited around his pressure, that orbited around him, so that when he was not, when he was paralyzed, the power of their, of their power helped him in his paralytic state. And so, this is what you call the church, the church with faith in action. This is social activism. This is the the church, church growth. This is the church practicing what it preaches. This is outreach. Now, carrying a man on a pallet is not easy. Not only did they have to be concerned about obstacles in the road, the man himself became a problem. He kept trying to see where they were taking him. He wanted to see ahead. He didn't have, he, 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 his faith was, 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 was not as strong. He kept trying to see where they were taking him. Every time he would shift his weight on that pallet, these brothers would have to stop and get their balance before they could move on. Getting people to see Jesus is not easy. And that's what, that's what this is saying in this text. Serving people is not always delightful or comfortable or smooth. And I, to now, even now, dealing with members, that it's not easy, right? But, and there's a the resistance. But there are problems, there are obstacles, there's oppositions to overcome. But these brothers, and I would encourage you, just like them, everyone watching this message, don't give up. These brothers were tenacious. They were also tardy. They were, they, were, they were late for the start of the meeting. And it's important to note that if these brothers had decided to go to the meeting without the man, they would have been on time. Right? So concerned about time. They, that, but our time, but God's time is always on time. They probably would have taken another form of transportation. They probably would have taken a Lexus or a limo. Or Lincoln. They would have been there when Jesus began to teach and, and in front of the front row and the choice seats and right down front looking into the face of Jesus where they could have seen everything and, and, and been seen by everyone. But it matters not where you sit in the church, but rather who sits in the church because of you. It matters not who sees you in church, but rather who sees Jesus in the church because of you. To turn this world around, to get this nation back on track, to get our children off drugs and tobacco, to keep them from killing themselves and each other, to get their family restored, the church revived, and the nation renewed will require a great deal of sacrifice and service on our part. 
For where there is a will, there's a way. And so when they arrived at the meeting, it was not only standing room only, but the room was filled beyond capacity. And as a matter of fact, my sanctified imagination tells me they had an usher looking out every few minutes for the fire marshal because the capacity crowd were certainly in violation of the public assembly ordinance. Imagine the disappointment these brothers must have felt when they saw this crowd because they wanted to get their friend to Jesus. But faith and service don't quit. Faith says there's always a way. Faith says that all things are possible if you believe. Faith says we can get this man to Jesus. Faith says we can make it if we try. They tried the front door, no room. They tried the back door, no room. They tried the windows, closed. But they tried the stairs and nothing. And when they were about to give up, they looked up. There's always a way, and as it says in this text, there's always a way if you look up. When things started going bad for you, you have to look up. When you can't, when you don't know where your hope cometh from, look up. When you can't see your way through, look up. When you don't think you can make it, when it seems like you can't take it, look up. When you're about to give up, look up. Faith requires that we take the high road. Faith has always been the key to unlock the treasure chest of heaven. And in order to get in touch with heaven, you have to do what? You have to look up. Amen, somebody. You have to look up. And so what the text is teaching us tells me that when Jesus heard the sound of the plaster breaking up over his head and the bricks and the mortar being moved, when he saw these four men struggling to gently lower their, their friend into the midst of the meeting, that tugged at the core of his being. He saw their compassion. He saw their love. He saw their service. He saw their faith. He knew that these brothers had gone out of their way, overcome their own obstacles, seized an opportunity, put aside personal concerns and differences, checked their eagles at the door, and brought their friend to him. But when Jesus sees faith like that, his heart is touched. His spirit is moved. And, and, and from that point, he will act. Amen? He will act. And he saw their faith, and he said to them, Man, your sins are forgiven. Get this, he saw their faith and the man's sins were forgiven. One more time, he saw their faith and he healed the man. You see, you've got the power. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sin. Then will I hear the land. It says that in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Then I will heal the land. There is enough faith in this church today, at now, in this world, to, to, to save this entire world. How do I know? Because my Bible tells me that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you shall speak to the mountains and they will not fall into the sea. My Bible says to me that all things are possible. If you believe, it was the faith of these men who got their friends to Jesus. It will be the faith that brings others to Jesus. You need not look around. You need not look around to see what God is going to use to lift people in the community. I've got news for you. God is going to use you. God is going to use me. God is going to use us. I'm not always, I'm not, and I want to say this, is that ultimately, Jesus saw their faith and said to them, Man, your sins, whatever they are, are forgiven. The Pharisees and the scribes got right on this. They thought that Jesus had crossed the lines of, of protocol. He had abused heavenly authority. And it says, Only God and God alone can forgive sins, they said. Jesus, who do you think they are? That's what they were saying to him. But don't you know that there is not only resistance getting people to Jesus, there's also resistance getting people when we bring people to Jesus. Who are these scribes and Pharisees? They were members of the religious order. They were teachers of the law. They were church folks. Like you and I. Well, I didn't want to show off, Jesus said. You see, forgiving sins was really the easy part, he says. But if you really want to know who I am, if you really want to know what I could do, if you really want to know the power that I have, watch this. 
Or this is what Jesus says. If you really want to know the power of performing through the orbit of pressure, if you really want to know the power of Jesus who will perform through the orbit of pressure, he says, he says, if you really want to know, man, get up off this pallet. Man, rise and pick up that mat and go home. Go on with living your life. Go back to your family. Go back to your church. Get up. And as the, as the church, especially as the African American church and community, we must keep the faith and let the faith keep us. We have to love this nation and our people enough to lift them on the shoulders of our faith and get them to Jesus. When Jesus sees our faith, 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 what happens? What happens? He will forgive sins. He will heal the land. He will save this nation. How do I know? You ask. How do you know, brother preacher? Because there's more to the story. This would not be the last time that a person was healed because of somebody else's faith and service. Keep turning the gospel pages. Look where another capacity crowd had gathered. On Calvary when God saw Jesus hanging on the cross, God's heart was touched. God's heart was touched. God's spirit was moved and God acted on our behalf. God saw our faith of the only begotten son and God saved us. God saw what Jesus did on Calvary and saved us. Our creator saw Jesus dying there on the cross and saved us, saved you and I. And God saw the nail scarred hands of Jesus and saved us. God saw the blood flowing from the pierced side of Jesus and saved us. God had a reason for saving you and for saving me. Not just so that we can go to heaven when we die. Not just so that we may see God face to face. Not just so we may be get rich and prosper. The real reason that God saved us is so that we can lift God up. And by lifting up others. The real reason why God saved us is so that God can lift, so that we can lift God up. And by lifting up others. Oh yes, it's about lifting God up. By lifting others. That is the power. That's the power. That's where you get the power to, to perform through the, through the orbit of pressure. Lifting somebody else up. Lifting somebody else up. Hallelujah, yes. How to reach the masses. You of every birth, lift them up. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. Lift them up. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, lift them up. I will draw all men unto me. Lift them up. All the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift them up. Lift the Savior up from them to see. Lift them up. Trust to him. And do not doubt the words that he said. Lift them up. I'll draw all men unto me. Lift them up. How do we how do we perform? How do we get the power to perform through the orbit of pressure? Lift up other, lift up God by lifting up others. Lift them up. Lift them up. Lift them up. Still he speaks from eternity. Lift them up. And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift them up. And that's my word for the day. How to have the power to, to perform in the orbit of pressure. Lift them up. Lift up God by lifting up others. The least of these. That's the real word. That's the message this morning. That's the message this morning. The power of performing through the orbit of pressure. Lift them up. Amen. Amen. And amen. And now for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now the benediction. The grace of God, the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit who rest, rule, and abide with your people, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Through Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord. Amen.